Welcome to the Matador Pencast, a monthly book show from the UK's number one self-publishing company. Here's your host, writer and broadcaster, Tony Horn. Hello again and welcome to the Pencast, a special show from Matador, the UK's leading self-publisher and presented by myself, Tony Horn, broadcaster and writer. And on today's edition of the Pencast, news from the book fair plus the latest from the self-publishing magazine, and a fantastic interview with Paul Carroll, who has written a book about writing. That's to come, but first, let's crack on with the very latest news from the world of publishing. Summer is a busy time for literary events, and Matador attends quite a few Our marketing manager, Sarah Taylor, takes a look. We're going to be attending the Winchester Writers' Festival for the fifth year running. It's a three-day event held at Winchester University and it's designed for authors to find out more information about how to get their book published. So whether they're still writing it or they're trying to actually get it physically published on the shelves, um, it kind of caters to all types of authors. We're also going to be attending the inaugural Froome Small Publishers Fair, which is organised by the Froome Writers Collective. We're going to feature alongside 15 exhibitors, as well as publishers across the country, um, and just again offering advice to budding authors. Later on in the year, we're going to be heading over to Swanwick Writers Summer School and hosting a two-hour workshop on how to design a cover. So that's every aspect of it, from the initial ideas over to the spine and also keywords and how to write the blurb on the back of the cover too. If you're going to any writers' events this summer, then do let us know how you get on and whether you think that Matador should attend. Now, our team of sales representatives from Star Book Sales hold an annual meeting with the publishers they represent. This year, Alice Graham from the marketing department went along to discuss progress and to get feedback from the sales reps. Each year we attend the annual Star Sales Summer Meeting, which is an opportunity for us to meet with the sales reps that rep our titles to bookshops, including Waterstones, WH Smiths and independent bookshops throughout the UK. It's an opportunity for us to showcase our key titles and update the reps on the press coverage that each book has had so far. Each rep also discusses the customers that they meet with, the needs of their clients and what they'll be looking for in the forthcoming year. The message that was taken away from this meeting was the importance of book covers, which is something that we work really hard to improve year on year here at Matador. Overall, the feedback was excellent and we receive a great deal of interest as a result of the repping work that Star do. And here's Sarah again with details of a new initiative for Matador. We're excited to announce that we're going to be launching a new series of video podcasts from July. Here at Matador, we like giving impartial, unbiased advice to self-publishing authors. So with that in mind, we're creating an informative series of podcasts, which basically explore various aspects of self-publishing, as well as looking at major developments in the industry and at Matador, um, and hearing from other authors and other sources on different aspects of the self-publishing process. So in our first podcast, which is coming out in July, we're going to be having a look at the self-publishing conference, which took place in May at the University of Leicester. We're also going to be talking to Stephen Fleming, who self-published his book Ice Hockey with us, um, and he basically shares lots of information for authors at various stages of the publishing process. Other topics that will feature throughout the year include the use of book trailers, ebooks, cover design, and much, much more. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Matador Publishing, and we'll be releasing all of our videos through there as they become available. And of course, there's plenty more online at the Matador website. Now, let's catch up with the very latest from this year's book fair. At the London Book Fair this year, we caught up with our friends at the Bookseller magazine on our stand, and we asked them how the magazine catered for self-publishing authors. So I'm Sarah from Matador, I'm here with Jeremy from Matador and Maria from the Bookseller. I just wanted to ask you a few questions about kind of publishing and self-publishing within that industry. How does the Bookseller um, go about um, encouraging self-publishing authors to get involved with a magazine? Does it have special columns or uh, does it do anything particular for self-published authors or is it sort of more generic? Um, We actually run a monthly um, double-page spread in the magazine, um, which is centred around writers. So how how we like to look at the the sort of author, self-published author sort of uh, divide, is we don't actually want to divide them. We like to look at them all as writers. So we, we, you know, that could be anyone from the best-selling authors to people self-publishing. So we try and include a mixture of those people in that 
double page spreads. Um, and we also um, are starting to look at kind of the um, figures, sales figures for physical um, physical books in that market. We also do an author day, um, which we're usually around about November of each year. Um, so we'll have some more information on that coming coming in the magazine soon. Um, and every week you have kind of have a small selection of titles that are forthcoming in certain categories or fiction and non-fiction. What do you think self-published authors can do to improve their chances of, of getting featured in those sections? I think just keep submitting your titles to us. Give us as much information as you can. Make it look professional as in the information you're giving to us. Um, make sure we get, say, um, an advanced information sheet or an AI sheet so we can have all of that. Let us know what press you're doing, what kind of social media coverage you have. We also caught up with author Tracy Rawls at the book fair and asked her about her publishing experience. And how did you find the self-publishing process? Uh, I think I found it very smooth, very seamless, I would say, as I've put in my acknowledgements in the book. <laughs> um, but you have to be organised and you have to be aware of the amount of work that goes in. If you go through every process, through um, your main, uh, obviously, the writing process, editing, making sure it's copy edited, that's very important, um, and obviously proofreading after the typesetting, um, Everything will knit together, but you do have to be prepared for hard work and to make sure that you submit the best work you can in order to it to be passed for press. So, um, yes, I think it went very well. <laughs> um, and what have you enjoyed most about doing the whole self-publishing of your book? Seeing it from the basic manuscript, all my ideas, all my pl- plot summaries, chapters, uh, the arc of it going through the whole process all the way through to the finished product, really... It's, it's been fabulous to see, you know, my basic ideas is scribbled down in note form, actually, in, you know, finished in a published uh, manuscript book. <laughs> no, I'd just like to thank everyone um, for helping me in the process, and it's been great, and it's fabulous to be at the London Book Fair 2016. Now on the Pencast, it's time for Meet the Author. Let's welcome to the show the one and only, I think, Paul Carroll. <laughs> You may be wrong there, Tony. I've, I've found at least three Paul Carroll's writing, uh, so uh, the listeners will have to find out which one I am. Yeah, well, you are author of Written Off, published by Matador earlier this year. That's the best clue possible. Yeah. Um, I found you easy enough on Amazon. What's the book about? Well, it's something that I think should interest uh, your listeners, because it's all about people who are trying to write and get a book published. Ah, OK. Um, so... How long did that take you? Because we often talk about we often talk about the people that stare out the window for ten years and procrastinate and know they've got a book in them and they don't get there. And then I, you know, I'm a machine. I've I've done like eighty thousand words in the last month. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> well that that is impressive. I've got to say, Tony. But uh, how long did that particular book take me? Probably about a year from start to finish. But of course, I do touch on that uh, in in written off because. I take, I take four different uh, writers who all have ambitions to get published, and uh, they all come at it from different genres, different backgrounds, different hopes, different aspirations, different frustrations. And uh, in there, I do have one, one writer who hasn't actually put pen to paper as yet, <laughs> but, but he's still as ambitious as the others who may have finished their books. One takes a year, one takes three years one takes even longer so uh how long is a piece of string um <laughs> it's uh that one took that particular piece of string took me a year <laughs> so your your background is journalism and and pr and business that's uh, correct consultancy yes. so is this a one-off this book or is it is it a piece of is it a piece of academic work or oh no it's definitely not uh academic well it's a satire. First and foremost, it's a satire. It's, it's a comedy. It's supposed to be humorous. It's got a black edge to it. But I hope uh, that most readers find it, first and foremost, an entertainment. And that's what I set out to do. Um, but hidden within that, uh, because I do follow the tracks of these four uh, aspiring writers, um, there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of, hard lessons and easy lessons within the uh, the fabric of the book um, and a number of people who've read it said they, they, they learned more about uh, how, to, how to try and get a book published and uh, what not to do uh, as uh, many 
courses it could have gone on. Yeah, this is one thing that we always talk about, and I think where a lot of, particularly in the self-publishing game, a lot of people, I won't say fail, but certainly struggle, that w- the work starts once you finish writing. And <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> and as you quite rightly said, Tony, my background is, is journalism and PR. Uh, and ironically, it's the part I, you know, it's the least enticing of the whole process because uh, that's that used to be my day job, and uh, you know now I, I'm enjoying writing. And uh, so when you get to the end of it, uh, and you then have to do your own editing, uh, make your own decisions on uh, characters, plot, tenses, um, marketing, uh, covers then uh, that's, that really, that's probably far more outside most aspiring writers' uh, realm of experience than the actual writing. I mean, luckily, there are people, you know, Matador have been very helpful in, in that respect. So there is help, but, in, but you know, what, what a self-publishing company can't do in the end is make sure what you put between the covers in terms of the words is the best it can possibly be. And I always say to people, well, you know, be your own worst critic and, more importantly, get other people to critique your scripts and, you know, take, take that criticism or their suggestions on the chin. Don't, don't, as I say, ask for criticism and expect praise. You know, listen and, you know, go through an edit, go through one edit, go through two edits. And I've learned this because, as, as you said, is in my first book. Well, actually, it's the second one um, that I've self-published. Uh, I had another black comedy, a satire <laughs> on uh, death and bereavement. Yeah, I always go for up tempo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, three years ago, and I've got, I've just finished a third one, which is coming out next year. And uh, as uh, you're interviewing me now, I'm about an eighth of a way into my fourth book. So uh, that's another thing that all aspiring writers need to recognise that yes, you can r- get that book out, the book that's been within you maybe for years. But if you're going to be a writer, yes, make that the best book you possibly can be. But then don't stop there. Mm. You have to have it in your ink in your blood, and you have to say, right, the next one's going to be better. The one after that's going to be better. And don't worry too much if if the phone doesn't ring and it's not one of the big publishers or the big literary agents saying, this is exactly what we've been looking for. Be true to yourself. And that lesson is in written off as well, that you write for yourself first and foremost and make it the best you possibly can and then keep going. That's how the success will come. I I think you make a really good final point there as well, that um, you have to live in two time zones. You have to live uh, in the future of what you are creating today begins its shelf life nine months perhaps down the line yeah. and in the process of creating that future you've also got to get your business head tapped in to what follows my favorite interview i think so far very different because it's obviously about the process of writing as well this is written off this is paul carroll thank you very much for being our guest on the pencast and there'll be another author interview next time around on the pencast now let's see what's in the very latest edition of the self-publishing magazine. The self-publishing magazine has been published by Troubadour since 2005, but last year it closed down. It was launched at a time when information on self-publishing was scarce, but since then many other sources of reliable information have emerged, particularly on the internet. Happily, in April the magazine relaunched. Dan Norris asked the new editor Rachel Gregory about the new launch. Can you tell me a little bit about why we are relaunching the self-publishing magazine website? We relaunched the website in April of this year and we felt that it was a good time mainly because people were contacting us interested in the type of content that we used to produce. Um, And so when we had a look, we were encouraged by this, we had a look at the archived content we had available to us and we realised that actually a lot of it was really, really relevant still and we also felt that we could add to it, we could refresh it a little bit. So we felt like it was an opportune time essentially. Can you tell me a little bit about how people are going to benefit from using the website? It's a free online resource, so it's intended to educate and inspire self-published authors. It doesn't really matter at all what stage of the process authors are at, so you can have self-published before or never, um, and you can just be considering it. Um, There's lots and lots of um, articles on there on all different topics, but case studies as well but also you can get involved it's a great way to connect with other self-published authors um, and also you can contribute as well if you've got some ideas for the magazine so there are lots of different ways 
The magazine is updated regularly with articles on publishing, writing, marketing and selling books and ebooks. And best of all, it's free to all users. Visit at selfpublishingmagazine.co.uk. And that is it for this edition of the Pencast. Thank you very much for lending us your ears. And if you would like to feature as a guest author on the Pencast, please get in touch via the website. And we'll see you next time as the Pencast continues. The Matador Pencast is written and produced by Sarah Taylor and Hawley Media. If you'd like to feature next time, please follow the link on the Matador website. And don't forget to check out more on your host at TonyHornBooks.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the first of every month as the Matador Pencast continues.